Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, we have five areas that we are monitoring in the Atlantic, all with a low chance of developing, but one particularly not designated has a very strong chance. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibits.com for Thursday, September 5th, 2024. Happy 39th birthday to me. Yes, indeed, 39 years old today, and we are tracking five disturbances in the Atlantic Basin for possible development. All have a very low chance at the moment, but we have to look to Africa for the chances to be increasing with time. So we have disturbance one in green by the Gulf Coast, disturbance two uh, just west of Bermuda in our red arrow, disturbance three with our black arrow, disturbance four with our purple arrow by Honduras, and then our disturbance five just north and east of the Caribbean islands by our pink arrow. Here's our vorticity signature of our disturbances. Uh, actually, Disturbance 4 is part of two areas that are very stretched out that I've highlighted. One was the old Disturbance yesterday, which is fading away. The stronger one's more highlighted by the National Hurricane Center, which is in the middle of the main development region now. And as I discussed, we have two tropical waves over the uh, continent of Africa, which are very enormous right now. One of them is li more likely going to be moving north uh, towards the um, Canary Islands. So we're not really expecting that one in the middle to develop. It's the one right in the middle of Africa that's going to be moving westward. And that one has the potential to become our next name system if these five other systems don't develop. And I'll show you that in this video. So here's Disturbance 1, a.k.a. Invest 90L, just off the Texas Gulf Coast. As you can see, our circulation is not well defined in this satellite image, but it is just south of Houston and Galveston. All of the thunderstorm convection is to the east of that developing low pressure system. As you can see here, the National Hurricane Center is giving it a 10% chance of developing over the next two days and seven days. Now, in terms of where this is gonna go, it's uh, forecast to drift southward uh, towards the Bay of Campeche where it's going to actually interact with another disturbance that's moving westward into this direction uh, as well, which will be Disturbance 4. And as you can see here, we have a very low chance of this developing, uh, only a couple of models are suggesting it in the next 48 hours. Here's Disturbance number two, a.k.a. Invest 99L. You can see the low-level circulation, but there's no thunderstorm convection associated with it right now, so that's why we aren't. We don't have this as a tropical storm or even a subtropical storm yet. If our thunderstorms were surrounded by that circulation, it could be classified subtropical rather quickly. It's got a 30% chance of developing over the next two and seven days, but it's really two days because it's going to be racing off towards uh, Newfoundland, Canada, as you can see here on the spaghetti track guidance models over the next two days. And we are already at tropical storm strength. We just need thunderstorm convection around that center to really kick off and detach itself from the frontal boundaries to be something subtropical. Here's the Sturbins 3 out in the middle of the main development region. This one had those two clusters yesterday. The cluster to the right has really dissipated it so that it was uh, so the one that was that we're watching now was that bigger cluster yesterday that became more dominant. It's got a 0% chance of developing over the next two days, 20% over the next three, uh, seven days, sorry. Then we have the Sturbins 4 now entering the Gulf of Honduras, and it's got a lot of thunderstorm convection, so expect a lot of flooding for uh, Honduras, especially in the mountains, and this is going to be sliding westward towards Belize, so you could see some flooding as well in the Yucatan Peninsula. No chance of development over the next two days, but like I said, when it interacts with Disturbance 1, Invest 90L, 
as it moves south from the Gulf Coast down towards the Bay of Campeche, maybe those two interacting will spin something up together. So it's got a small 20% chance of developing in the next seven days uh, in the Bay of Campeche. And last but not least, we have Disturbance 5 just to the north and east of the Caribbean islands. The center that's trying to develop is in between these two blobs of thunderstorm convection, so nothing organized at the moment. It's encountering an upper level trough, which is shearing away the storms, which you can see moving from south to north here from all that shear. 0% chance over the next two days. A small temp 5, I mean, Disturbance 5 has a small 10% chance over the next seven days. Stronger on the European than on the GFS, which I'll show you. So here is the GFS model. Again, green is uh, 90L, red is 99L, pink is Disturbance 3, purple Disturbance 4, and black Disturbance 5. There's that upper level trough interacting with 5. Everywhere else has pockets of lighter wind shear environment, but the Atlantic as a whole is rather uh, wind sheared out right now with a lot of dry air also surrounding that wind shear with those pockets where we have our clusters and disturbances of moisture. So 24 hours from now, you can see our best chances for disturbance uh, 1 and 2, 99 and 90 L developing in green and red. The others not quite there. 48 hours from now on Saturday, September 7th, we have 99 L heading towards Canada. Broad area of low pressure, like I said, if thunderstorms can form around that circulation and detach from the frontal boundaries, we could see subtropical storm Francine with it. Same thing down in the Gulf of Mexico. It's associated with frontal boundaries at the moment. If it can detach itself, it can potentially be a tropical system as well, as you see the vorticity tightening. And then the others are just too stretched out at the moment for tropical development. Purple is Disturbance 4 over the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, 5 in black is going to be moving through the Caribbean islands. And then pink is very stretched out at the moment, which is Disturbance 3. Here's the wind shear environment that's in count that all of them are encountering, except for 3, which is in a light wind shear environment. So it's been able to maintain its very large convection. But look at Africa, you see that big blob coming. That is our next tropical wave that I've highlighted in blue by the time we get to day five on Tuesday, September 10th. And as you can see, coming off the coast of Africa potentially could already be developing into a tropical depression. So we'll keep an eye on it. It's still over Africa right now, but we'll see if the National Hurricane Center designates this as Disturbance 6 uh, over the next uh, 24 hours. We also see 3 trying to finally get itself organized by the time we get to day 5. Uh, 1, I mean, Disturbance 1 has moved south to interact with Disturbance 4 in green and purple in the Bay of Campeche. Not really showing signs of development there. 99L has moved its way into the waters between Canada and Greenland as an extra tropical system. And the Sturbance 5 is moving through the Caribbean islands on the GFS, not really developing. Large amount of wind shear across the Atlantic, except in the main development region where we see the Sturbance 3 and our new tropical wave trying to develop. And a pocket of light wind shear in the Bay of Campeche but the models are not really showing signs of those two disturbances that take advantage of that. But we will see a change in about five days of a lot of more moisture across the Atlantic, not a lot of Saharan air layers. So that's going to be the signs that the Atlantic is trying to get itself into proper peak condition, which September 10th usually is, where we normally have like three or four tropical systems named at this time, at one time, during the peak hurricane season. So potentially these could be named. We'll see. And then day seven, Thursday, next Thursday on September 12th, again, Disturbance 3 and our potential sixth disturbance in blue 
uh, will be moving through and out of the main development region as potential tropical storms. So we'll see if that is the case. Here's the European model. Pretty much the same thing, showing both Disturbance 3 and our tropical wave developing into potential systems and maybe our subtropical storm as it heads towards Canada. Here's the ensemble models showing the support or lack of support thereof of all of our tropical entities that we're monitoring. One of them, Invest 90 Disturbance 1. Then we have 99L heading towards Canada. Disturbance 4 in the Western Caribbean heading towards the Gulf of Mexico. Disturbance 3 heading out of the main development region potentially. And then Disturbance 5, uh, which out of all of them is probably the least likely to develop unless the European model is correct and has it going north of the islands where it has a small chance for development like the National Hurricane Center is saying. And then our tropical waves. Next name on the list would be Francine, if any of these disturbances can take advantage of that. If all of them were to develop, all five or even six, we would have ourselves all the way down to Kirk, uh, but I don't see that happening, maybe not until the end of September when things really change and MJO uh, gets its act together and moves in towards the Atlantic Basin. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on deciphering weather. Like to give a shout out to Darcy56 for donating to yesterday's channel, so thank you very much. And if you would like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.